common sense tells you that you are a solid object like this phone. You assume the you watching this right now is the same physical matter that woke up this morning. But quantum field theory says that your perception is fooling you. At the fundamental level, electrons are constantly popping in and out of the vacuum. You aren't a solid rock. You are a flickering flame being annihilated and recreated trillions of times a second. In this podcast excerpt, Dr. Epstein and I demonstrate that the Kabbalistic concept of perpetual creation isn't just poetry. Rather, it's the physical mechanism of the universe. And that means you have no excuse to be limited by a past that no longer exists. Here's one idea from Andy Goldfinger. Every lecture when we look on a very short time scale is being recreated. Virtual particles and antiparticles seem to pop into existence and mediate this process. As an electron travels, for example, an electron and positron pop out of the vacuum. The original electron collides with the positron and the new electron continues. Feynman diagrams depend on this. The particles that pop out of nothing are not just virtual. We observe their interaction with other particles. In Kabbalah, this is the concept of perpetual creation. As we reset every morning, in his goodness, meaning God, he renews daily and constantly the works of creation. Now, I found this very fascinating because this is a topic I love from a Hasidus. And even like you said, it's in the Siddur. There's a letter called the Tzchich Bina, which is Epistle 11, or Simon Yud Aleph. And Agaris, uh, it's Agaris Akadesh and the Alta Rebbe. And in there, he brings up this concept that Hashem's created in the world, Yeshemayim Kois Verega, something from nothing every moment. He also quotes a Shaykhid Vemuna. But this, he says, whenever you're thinking there's something bad happening, realize that Hashem is created in the world every moment, something from nothing. And we see it not as exactly framed in the blessings of Shema, as you said, as you quoted there. It's very similar. The Alter Rebbe is a little more exact with it. I assume he's not the first one to put it up in the exact language. But I was always curious what the science, how it shows itself in science. And then that was the first time I saw it. And I recently also saw someone describe how if you have like the photoelectric effect where you have light or energy come in and hit or be absorbed into an electron in the lower orbital, and then it jumps to a higher orbital, it doesn't exist in between. It gets absorbed, somehow goes into the quantum vacuum or some po- somehow there's some process and then a new electron appears in the higher orbital, the quantum leap, if you will. And I never thought of that in terms of the entire, every particle in the universe being created something from nothing and that you constantly have this quantum foam. So I, I don't know what thoughts you have on that. And I actually wanted to make a video at some point on that. And when I read it from yours, it was the first time I saw it and it just, I love when you see things and they just click. So I'm curious uh, what your thoughts are on that, what you thought of when you first read it and how that affects you or, or additional things I'm missing that I didn't bring up. If you're enjoying this excerpt from my podcast with Dr. Epstein, be sure to sign up for my weekly newsletter so you don't miss out on a sneak preview of my upcoming book on the synthesis of Torah and science. The link is in a pinned comment below the subscribe button. Totally a fascinating thing when that we see this parallel in, in modern physics and in Kabbalah and uh, Hamid my Sibiratius that with Hamid you can touch it as you said as always and the works of Chassidus that speak about this that it's really a powerful life tool being able to just not worry about anything. I remember like am I in no waking up one morning and it's just like the whole world is not much new. There's nothing in my past, anything that any baggage weighing me down, like there's nothing to every day. The person just mamish, we're there, we serve the Ubono Shalom. And the world is just creative. There's nothing to, there's nothing to worry about. It's something, yeah, very special implication. And also we see the time energy uncertainty principle is another place where this shows up, where anytime we measure the energy of a particle. As a, it's a little like the next paragraph. <laughs> oh, right. Literally, it's the next line. Furthermore, there's a principle in physics called time, energy, and certainty. <laughs> All right, go yeah, on. Yeah. No, it's great. Like you clearly wrote yeah. the book. <laughs> you don't have a ghost right. <laughs> you can't be accused of ghost writing these books. They're so uh, niche. Anyway, sorry. Go on. So the time uncertainty yeah. principle. Let's hear it. So it's an incredible thing that if you run a uh, energy experiment to measure the energy of something, so you run it over a short period of time, and it tell that tells you how much variation there's going to be in the amount of energy. That, that you measure. And so if you run an experiment for a long period of time and you keep measuring, you know, the energy, so you'll get a, a very precise value of the energy. But it tells us that like 
if it's anything like the, the position uh, momentum uncertainty principle, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, where you can know the position, but not the momentum, or you can know the momentum, how fast it's traveling, but not the position. So it, it really, these things are not known, like they're not, they're fundamentally un, undefined in a way where over a very short time period, if you'll look at what's the energy variation, so it'll be so large that it's larger than the energy of the whole universe if you go on a short enough time period. So in a sense, over that time period, there is no energy existence according to this principle. You try to measure the energy of the whole universe if you had such a machine. I well, guess if you take the limit, you get to God. You get to Hashem. Ah, I hear it, right, right. Very short period. I like infinite energy. That's I just a, thought of that. You see infinity. I like that. <laughs> the whole brainstorming. If you enjoyed this excerpt, click here to see the full podcast episode. And if you want to learn how quantum mechanics proves the Bible's age of the universe, click here. Thank you for partnering with me as we build this unshakable conviction together.